예, 안녕하십니까. 방금 소개받은 서울대학교 사회학과 김석호라고 합니다. Good afternoon, as introduced, I am Sokho Kim, the professor of SNU. In fact, this is my first time to participate in the World Ocean Forum as a speaker. So today, as introduced, I would like to talk about the UNSDG as well as the KSDG. And I have been engaged in this work for a long time. And regarding the SDG 14 and KSDG 14, uh, these are related with oceans. So I would like to give you the overview of UNSDG as well as KSDG. Then I am going to focus more on the SDG 14 that's related with oceans. So let me begin my presentation. This is the table of my presentation. As you can see, I'm going to begin with the UN SDG and then I will move to the KSDG. So I will talk about the indicators and also targets and goals. Here you see the overview of UN SDG. I'm sure you are pretty familiar with this. SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals. So the Sustainable Development Goals refer to a comprehensive, far-reaching, people-centered set of universal and transformative goals and was adopted back in 2015 and all countries have agreed to achieve SDG by the year of 50, 2030. So during the 70th session of the UN General Assembly, member states unanimously adopted the Transforming Our World, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which contains the 5P principle, people, planet, prosperity, and peace as well as partnership. So under this five P principles, 17 goals and 169 targets were defined. And under 164 targets, we have 45 performance indicators. The countries around the world have provided the high quality, reliable data in order to develop the indicator systems. And especially under the principle of leaving no one behind, in order to support the principle of inclusiveness, it is emphasized that all indicators are disaggregated by sex, age, income, disability, migration status, and so on. So countries may do have different vulnerabilities. So they are taken into consideration in reviewing the indicator system. So that was a long overview of UNSDG. Let me speed up. And here you can see 17 goals under UNSDG. So the goal one deals with the poverty. So goal one is to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. And then goal two is related with agriculture, so achieve food security, improve nutrition, and promote social agriculture to end hunger. And goal three is about to ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all ages. And goal four is to ensure inclusive, equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for everyone. Goal five is about gender equality. So it is to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Goal six is related with environment and water resources. And goal seven is about energy. In particular, when it comes to goal seven, it talks about 
uh, the ensuring access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for everyone. And this will lead to the growth of economy, creating decent jobs, so which is and as well as the full and productive employment and decent work for everyone. So that's about goal eight. And goal nine is to build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusiveness and sustainable industrialization and to foster innovation. Goal 10 is to reduce inequality within and among countries. And goal 11 is to make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. Goal 12 says that we have to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. And goal 13 talks about the need to take urgent actions to combat climate change and its impacts. Goal 14 is to conserve and sustainably use the ocean, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. So up until goal 13, these are the goals for uh, different sectors. And goal uh, 14 deals with the foundation, the very foundation of the other goals, which is about oceans and seas. And goal 15 is to protect and restore and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems. And goal 16 is about the governance. So, so far I have talked about the UNSDG and their goals. Now, let me touch upon global indicators framework, how they are produced and how they are managed. In fact, each indicator involves um, fierce conflicts of interest among different countries. And therefore, the international consensus as well as national consensus among different stakeholders within the nation have to be built. And this requires consistent dialogue and conversations. And once that consensus is achieved, then again, we have to launch another round of dialogue with civil society. So in order to manage this whole process, the UN set up the Statistical Commission, which develops the global indicator framework and also creates the expert groups for each different goals so that these expert groups can have communications with relevant civic organizations. And after this process, Currently, IAEG SDG submitted the revision composed consisting of 244 indicators and they are also working to develop an indicator framework by continuously monitoring data availability and methodology development. So there are the indicators for targets and indicators for methodologies. So 169 targets can be divided into goal targets as well as the targets for or the indicators for or targets for the means of implementation. And also some indicators still remain ambiguous, still need more discussion. And therefore, they have adopted the tier system. So let's say that the indicators in tier one is conceptually clear and has an internationally established methodology and standards available. And tier two is the indicators uh, that the data are not regularly produced by countries. And tier three is there is no internationally established methodology or standards being available yet. And in ATAPF, they made another agreement. And as a result, tier three is now gone. So for the past five years, 
we try to develop the indicators based on this tier system from tier one to tier three. That was the goal of the international community for the past five years. But I believe that in the years down the road toward the year 2030, the focus of countries is to produce the reliable indicators as well as data. So in order to create indicators, as you can see from the slide, so first of all, the information and data have to be produced and indicators have to be made, mainly led by the statistics office of different countries. So here you can see the indicator production system as well as the monitoring and evaluation framework. And together with the statistics office of Korea, I'm actually writing down the UNSDG progress report for 2020 for Korea. So each country has to submit the progress report based on the indicator system and to that includes the degree of progress that they achieve based on specific statistical targets. And so here you see the 17 goals, their key contents and indicators. Please refer to the slide for the details. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Finally we arrived in fourteen. And I believe that the SDG 14 has a lot to do with this forum. So let me elaborate this. As you can see, goal 14 consists of various targets as well as it has a variety of indicators. So please refer to the slide. And Regarding the SDG 14, using statistics available in Korea, I actually um, put some estimates in the slide. And later I'm going to elaborate on this, but there are slight differences between UN SDG 14 and KSDG 14. UNSDG 14 focuses on the conservation of maritime resources as well as the equal distribution among different countries, whereas the KSDG in Korea, SDG 14, it focuses more on the protection of the Korean fishing resource, fishery resources as well as to enhance the quality of life for fishermen and fishing um, industry. And these are about 14, 15, 16, and 17. And now, let me touch upon KSDG. The overall goals are the same with the UNSDG, but there are still some differences that UNSDG pursue the common interest of the international community. And in fact, the SDG stem from MDG, Millennium Development Goals. And Millennium Development Goals are basically about providing assistance from advanced nations to developing countries because each country do have different national interests and therefore the MDG experienced a lot of um, hassles and struggles uh, for the establishment. And in order to avoid that, the SDG recommends countries to establish their own targets. So Korea, we developed a very special, the Korea specific indicator system. It is to contain and reflect the uniqueness of the Korean circumstances. That's why we established this KSDG. And for the details of KSDG, um, I'm going to skip that. But what I'd like to mention and highlight is that based on the legal uh, foundation, Korea launched the Sustainable Development Committee, which is a public organization. And as a part of the basic plan for sustainable development, they update KSDG every second year. Now, let me 
touch upon the governance system for KSDG, as you can see, a prominent feature of KSDG is that it has the bottom-up method for indicator creation, indicator development. In other words, we do have working group consisting of different experts. And there are also stakeholder groups, which we call KM Ghosts, which include the civic organizations and government offices, and they submit the agenda to the cabinet meeting and social ministerial meeting for the final adoption. So here you can see that we do have the bottom-up process that starts from the social dialogue. And the 17 goals are equal to the UNSDG 17 goals. So they are very well aligned. And you can see if you look at the indicators, the alignment rate is only 21%. In other words, the other 80% are Korea specific. And here you can see the contents and indicators of main goals. So from goal 1 to goal 2, 3, 4, 5, and till goal 14. Again, the key contents are the same as the UNSDG. But there are also some additions of Korea-specific goals and indicators in order to reflect the Korea's unique conditions and situations. We also have the detailed targets and sub-indicators. And these data are produced by Statistics Korea, as I mentioned earlier. So from goal 1 to goal 17, you can see that KSDGs have been developed in alignment with the UNSDG, and KSDG also produces the progress report every year. So, so far, I have talked about the KSDG and UNSDG, and ultimately, uh, from the long-term view, I believe the KSDG and UNSDG have to be converged. And in fact, this is the view of many experts. And for this, we are now working on the relevant legislation 